big news from the Juno spacecraft. Right. And uh, obviously, this is an uh, artist's impression of Juno, um, getting close to Jupiter. Uh, Juno arrived at uh, Jupiter last uh, July and has been orbit around Jupiter. It has a 53 day orbit where it takes it uh, far away from Jupiter and then close to Jupiter. And when it's close to Jupiter, it's, its closest point is called a perijove, and it's on its perijove uh, 6 uh, mission, um, actually, which happened uh, um, May 19th. And uh, we'll show um, uh, a few images from that mission uh, near its closest approach, and then also uh, go into some of the scientific um, uh, results uh, that, that came out of a recent teleconference. The first image we'll look at is the southern hemisphere, and you can see those uh, five little um, uh, dots here, or uh, little ovals. They're called uh, pearls. And um, we'll, then we're going to take a look at the next slide, which is a Juno uh, shot. And this is the raw image that comes in and is posted on the Juno Cam page. And you can see, the, you can see those uh, pearls, which are kind of up here. So we're looking very much down in the southern hemisphere, something that we can't see from Earth because uh, we're actually looking towards the equator of uh, Jupiter. So these are very unique views and uh, views that we've never seen uh, before. Of the, of the polar regions. And then um, once the pictures are posted, uh, the public will enhance them. And this is a really nice, super enhanced picture showing uh, details of the bands and, and also these uh, swirly storm-like uh, features. We can go to the next slide. And uh, we're going to look at an area down over here we can just barely see in this telescopic picture. And uh, we'll look at the Juno picture of this area in super enhanced detail. And what that actually is, is this uh, swirly uh, cloud uh, feature that we see uh, right over here. Notice that the polar region is very much uh, kind of darkish blue compared to the lower latitudes, which are more um, uh, brown and uh, beige color. We're going to turn, uh, go to the next image, and we're going to turn Jupiter around. And this is the north, and this is the south. And so that we can orientate our um, uh, Jupiter with the images that we'll show next. And if you look in this area, we can see uh, one of the poles and another pole, and there's, there's this uh, band in between, and also this large broad band known as the Southern Equatorial Belt. And this is taken from a distance of 8,000 miles. This is the huge equatorial band, and it looks like it dominates this picture. But actually, as you've so seen um, in the previous image, it's, it's only kind of like, it's not that big compared to the overall. Um, it's only that big. Yeah, it's, uh, when I say that big, it's, it's actually yeah. from here to here, it's 4,000 miles across, just to give you a sense of scale. We can go to the next slide, and we can see an even closer look at the South Southern Equatorial Band, which um, uh, has um, these little specks here. And because we're so close to the cloud tops of Jupiter, these individual specks we would not normally see, but we, we can see them now in detail, are actually uh, tiny little storms, um, just about 30 miles across and 30 miles high. And you can just, you can see the, cast, the shadows they cast. I think you can just barely see them. And that's how you can calculate uh, roughly how big these storms are. Wow. It's believed that they're, they're, little, um, they're made out of uh, ice or ammonia. Um, and uh, the, it may be snowing or ammonia ice or, or just snow down on the clouds below. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. go to the next slide, and we can see the, the two features, um, the, the two pearls, actually. And this is called, this thing here is nicknamed the whirl in between the pearls. I don't know why, but somebody The whirl? W-H-I-R-L? Yeah, whirl between, whirl in the pearls. OK, let's. Great name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just by the way, this, this is about one Earth diameter, just, just to give you a sense of scale. OK, uh, let's go to the next slide. And um, up in the northern region of uh, Jupiter, there is an area, you can just barely see it. It's just this dark feature here known as the Great Polar Spot. And uh, when we um, go to the next image, which was taken by Juno, you can see an enormous uh, swirly storm, and um, it's so big that it actually casts a shadow. So it indicates it's at a higher level above the uh, base level of uh, Jupiter's clouds. OK, so those are the images. Um, there are a lot more I wish I could show. Um, but uh, we're going to go to the science results. 
this is basically an uh, artist's impression um, showing uh, Juno and its perigeal path uh, close to Jupiter. And it takes about two hours from, to go from here to about here. But it just shows you um, the lobes that you see here are, are um, the magnetic field, uh, which is uh, very strong. And the uh, magnetic field is so strong, it actually trap radiation. And the radiation inside those, uh, um, between those magnetic fields is about 20,000 times higher than the radiation belts of Earth, which is enough to destroy a spacecraft like Juno if it flies through it. A Juno avoids the radiation belts, which are shown in the orange, for most of its fly through, then goes part way into the radiation belts. But it's moving very fast. At its closest point to Jupiter, it's moving about 130,000 miles per hour. So it only gets a fried a little bit, but it's protected by <laughs> The, the spacecraft has a, is protected by a, a titanium vault, and so all the instruments that are inside are protected, so they don't really get fried. <laughs> so, um, let's look at this image. This is um, um, an ultraviolet image of Jupiter's auroras. This trail here is caused by uh, electrons from Io uh, drifting down into uh, Jupiter's upper atmosphere. Io is a moon of Jupiter. Io is a moon of Jupiter, those who yeah. may not know it. And uh, what's so interesting about this um, image is that the, um, the aurora, which is in uh, ultraviolet and is shown in uh, false color here, the green and the white is mainly from electrons interacting with Jupiter's hydrogen upper atmosphere. And the red is electrons coming from the cloud tops and, and then zoom and actually moving into uh, Jupiter's uh, magnetosphere, hmm. which is a very different uh, dynamic of how we expect aur auroras to form on Earth. They're mostly the interaction of solar particles with our magnetic field. Another interesting result comes from Juno's um, infrared uh, mapper, which shows you the regions which are warm and the regions which are cold, the regions which are very warm are the uh, brighter regions here. This is the main uh, south equatorial belt, and you can see it's a very cold region. There's a red spot, which is also interestingly a cold region. And the pearls down here are also uh, cool as well. Juno spacecraft has several uh, microwave detectors, in fact, uh, six of them. And it can actually pair down um, to about 220 miles below the cloud tops of Jupiter and reveals some of the dynamics uh, below. And what's so interesting is that this red-orange region is uh, mostly um, ammonia um, material, actually ammonia gases and mm. other materials. And you can see its profile is that it actually um, wells up towards the uh, cloud tops of Jupiter, near the equator there. And so this gives us an interesting view of uh, some of the dynamics that's happening below um, uh, Jupiter's um, cloud tops that we've never seen before. Our current view of Jupiter's atmosphere and uh, all the way down from the top the meteorological layer to the uh, interior is that we, um, we mostly have studied, and especially with Juno, uh, 12 bars of uh, pressure, 12 to 20 bars of pressure. One bar is um, the pr air pressure of this room. This is atmospheric pressure. So w as you go deeper, uh, the pressures, uh, the air pressures increase. Uh, what uh, Juno um, will need to determine, and it, using its gravity um, detectors, is whether Jupiter has a solid core, um, which we see here, and that's still in question, and, and also whether it has a radio, a, a zone where it's, there's a lot of heat uh, driving the convective zone um, above. So there's a lot more um, to learn, but this is our current, current model of uh, what we think the interior of Jupiter is. And uh, with more um, uh, fly, more perigeos, I should say, um, there will be um, uh, more information, and then we can review a little bit more about the internal structure of uh, Jupiter. What's metallic hydrogen? Metallic hydrogen is uh, hydrogen uh, gas that's compressed at, under very great pressure, it becomes a solid, and, and it has metal-like properties. And it's a superconductor, right? It is a yeah. superconductor. Like a lattice. Well. Yeah. And then the electrons can, can go flow very freely easily. through this lattice yeah. of protons. I have a question, if yes. I may. Um, and it just struck me, looking at one of those pictures, I know they're just getting the data, and they must be flooded by it. But 
in all, all that you read, did you see anything, uh, did anyone mention anything about uh, re revisiting the Shoemaker Levy 9 impacts and what it dredged up? You know, I was looking at that model that you had. Um, mm -hmm. And there were a lot of mysteries uh, yeah. around that. And I just wondered if you read anything. I'm sure that people will be doing that, but I, I was struck by that. Yeah, I, I didn't come across anything yeah. like that. Um, but that, that would be very interesting yeah. to see, you know, what the, the dark material obviously was, yeah. what was the remnants of the comet, but uh, was mm -hmm. there something, how deep did it excavate exactly. the cloud tops yeah. of Jupiter? Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then we'll go to the next video. This is very interesting. Uh, Ju Juno has uh, four star trackers, mm -hmm. and uh, one of its star trackers, while it was in Perijove, um, was able to image uh, that line there, which you see, and in the background, you can see the constellation of Orion. That line is actually uh, Jupiter's ring, and we know that it's a ring uh, because we've seen it in other pictures from, uh, from Voyager uh, back in the 70s. And uh, we go to the next image uh, just to show you that uh, indeed is uh, the constellation of Orion. There's the belt, and there's Betelgeuse, and the, the ring going outwards. So this is with, from inside of the rings, of one of the first pictures taken. And uh, to sum it all, this is the Perijove um, sequence uh, from, from northern um, Jupiter to southern Jupiter. And then we'll finish off with a video uh, showing the actual flyover kind of animated based on these images. And as you can see, um, when you get, when Juno got close to uh, Jupiter, the pictures, it was going really fast, 130,000 miles per hour. And the camera literally had to pan to be able to uh, not have those pictures uh, be blurred. So how far above the cloud tops? Uh, a Perijove, about 3,000 miles, closer than any spacecraft ever. <laughs>